Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about soundproofing walls. Well, let's uh, reset the uh, clock, so to speak, here, because there's no such thing as soundproofing. With noise transmission, nothing is proofed. It's managed. So we really want to say sound management. Proof gives people the wrong idea. Proof gives them the idea that it's absolute. Nothing could be further from the truth with noise. I have built rooms with three walls, poured concrete on separate foundations with airspace between them, still get 30, 40 cycle bleed. So there's no proofing when it comes to sound. It's managed, you have to manage it. And in order to manage it, you have to quantify and qualify it. You have to measure it because you have to know how big it is, how much of a problem it is, what frequency the problems are at before you can start managing it, right? got to identify what we're trying to manage. So noise transmission is vibrational acoustics. We take airborne energy that moves through the air, strikes a wall, and then we want it to come out the other side with a smaller signature. But when it goes through the air and then it strikes the wall, it turns into vibrations. And vibrations are part of vibrational acoustics. So it's still under our, our laws of physics, but it's a different branch of physics, airborne versus vibrational, okay? So barrier is a structure you build between the source of the noise and yourself, the receiver, which is usually inside your room. The barrier that you build, the wall that you build, is frequency and amplitude dependent. Not all noise is the same. And this is the nonsense on the internet. They have this double wall, green glue stuff, ugh, gosh. And everybody thinks that that's what you build for all noise. And that's nonsense for a couple reasons. One, it's only really good at frequencies above 125. I get calls every day from people who've built their theaters using that methodology. And they call me because it didn't stop the low frequency. It can't. It's not designed to. If you understand the physics of that design, you know it doesn't have a chance for low frequency energy. So you have to identify, you have to measure the noise, okay? Every material type you use, the construction methodology, is, rated, is related to the noise frequency and amplitude. The materials you use. And here's the thing with noise. You don't want to spend one dollar more than you have to with noise. You'll never get it back because it's a permanent construction build. There's no wall hanging panel, freestanding unit. A lot of people think our ACD ser uh, series and our carbon panels will stop noise. They won't. They'll reduce the pressure in the, in the room, which will minimize the noise that's being transmitted, but it won't stop it. Sound absorption and noise transmission are completely different. People confuse them all the time. The barrier that you build for noise that's less than 125, a lower frequency noise, is a lot different than the barrier you build above 125 hertz. For example, below 125, you can have walls that are 8, 10, 12 inches thick. Above 125, you can do it in a couple inches if you know what you're doing. So you can see the, the difference right there just in materials and the construction methodology. Must measure noise over seven days. We require in all our noise design a seven day noise measurement because we were looking for what we call in physics minimum and maximum pressures. So we want to know some days, this is probably relevant to your particular situation, some days it's louder than others. I know here at the studio early mornings on Thursdays when the garbage truck comes, I can't do videos. Okay, so I have to limit the usage of my videos. No problem. It's only one day and it's only for about 10 minutes. So it's not that big of an issue. But let's say that's not the case with you. Let's say you have a lot of traffic, a lot of noise, whatever your uh, location. So if we map out the noise over seven days, if we take noise measurements over seven days, we'll get an idea of what the maximum pressure is on what day of the week. And then we design the barrier for that. We design the barrier for the maximum pressure we're going to be up against because then all the minimum or lower pressures will be covered, right? 
Barrier design, it's a ratio of the noise inside the room and the noise outside the room. Those are the two things that we have to uh, worry about. In LA, we do a lot of work in Los Angeles with engineers who work at two and three in the morning and they're in neighborhoods. So what they could get away with during the day when human activity is the greatest, they can't get away with at night because the noise floor in the neighborhood drops 30, 40 dB in some cases. So if you're outputting 100 dB mixing some you know loud stuff and the neighborhood is at 45 dB, that's a 60 dB swing, you're gonna be transmitting a lot of noise into the neighborhood and it's gonna be mostly noticeable at that time, where during the day it might not be. So you have to be really, really careful. Barrier design is always a ratio of what kind of uh, frequency and amplitude of noise you have outside and inside. And that's what we have to design for. Soundproofing walls. I hope this really helps because there's a lot of confusion out there about it. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.